Hello and welcome. If this is your first video with me, my name is Angel. I grew up in a cult called the Children of God. I've been out for a little, a uh, little over a decade, and I now tell stories from that time to talk about just the resiliency of the human spirit and also what it's like to go through the healing journey from something like that. So, welcome. If this is your first video, um, if this is your like second or third, be sure to like and subscribe because it does help. It is useful, um, and. The story that I have today stems from a conversation that I had with my therapist where he asked me, we were nearing the end of our session and he was like, Angel, your choices are like love versus fear. And if those are your choices, like which one do you choose? And I was like, um, I disagree with the premise. I was like, I disagree that it's love versus fear. And he was like, well, why? And I was like, well, let me like, let me tell you what I receive as love or what I, what love means to me. And for me, love was always used against me because the cult that I grew up in, obviously they were very abusive. And if I was ever being abused sexually, it was because they loved me. And if I was ever abused physically or mentally or emotionally, it was also because they loved me. And they actually had this whole ritual that after they would beat you physically, um, they would then um, like hold your face and make you look at them and then remind you that they did this to you because they loved you. And then you would have to hug them. And that would like end the beating ritual because it could it would start out of anger most of the time sometimes they would come let you know you did this bad so you're going to get 10 swats or whatever it was but a lot of times it would start out of anger so how it would start would be different but how it would end would be the same it would be with the reminder that they did this because they loved you and now you had to thank them for their love and hug them and then later on as i was older um the love that they used against you was you were supposed to love everybody and the way that they would manipulate this is like men would come in like men who were very I'm just gonna say undesirable <laughs> and they knew they were undesirable so they would come in and they would tell you that you owed them love because the way that the cult framed it was that like God's love provides for everybody and as a woman, my job was to provide sex for people who were unloved. So I would have these men come in and tell me that um, I owed them sex because I was a vessel of God's love. Um, and then later on, when I was in my marriage, um, I, and I would be curious and I would want to ask questions, he, out of love for me and trying to keep me safe, he would be like, look, don't ask these questions because it makes you look stupid. Why not I just tell you? Um, what's right and wrong and all like help to steer you but like don't ask questions to other people because I um, had asked his professors a couple of questions and he was like no like I'm gonna save you from your own stupidity and out of love for you just let me be your guide um, and that is what my experience with love was like and then my experience with fear is that fear kept me from some of those beatings because they would beat you and then they would stop and then hold you and, and tell you like now tell me you love me and fear taught me how to hold my breath. And if I could hold my breath and stop crying, then I could tell them that I loved them in like a small burst, and then the beating would be over. And if I couldn't do that, they kept beating me. So fear taught me like to hold my breath right away, and then I would get out of extra beatings. And then later on, when the men would come to me and, and try and tell me that I owed them sex because of like because they loved me, or I owed them sex because Jesus loved them, the way that I learned how to do that, the fear of being forced to have sex with these people would be that I would adapt and then become friends with these people before they had the ability to come to me and and ask me for anything. I would be like, oh my God, we're best friends. You're just like, uh, you're like a brother to me. You're like a best friend to me. Um, so it made me adapt my behavior real quick. And I was able to get into um, like the, the friend zone with all these people so that I wouldn't be able to so they wouldn't be able to come manipulate me and ask me for sex. So fear made me, fear kept me from those situations. And then later on, when I was in my marriage, the fear of being with somebody who wanted to keep me from thinking for myself and, and the fear of being in a marriage where somebody else, um, where somebody else's life took precedence over mine was the thing that got me out of the marriage, which was a good decision. So. Fear has been the basis for all like the smart and the good and the survival like decisions in my life. Those have all been fear-based and love was always used against me, always. Um, I did not know what healthy love looked like 
until well in my 30s. And, um, but fear has been super helpful. And this is, I told my therapist all of this. And I was like, look, at the end of the day, if those are my options, love or fear, fear is going to win every time. Like fear has been the thing that's kept me safe. Fear has been my motivator. Fear has been the thing that's gotten me here. And so why the hell would I ever pick love? And so he was like, all right, well, <laughs> like fear is not that great of a choice. So let's figure out something else. And I was like, yeah, um, like love and fear is not a good question to ask me. I need a third option. And I need to create a third option because I don't want love or fear to be my only options because the way that love has been used against me my whole life, I'm never going to choose it until I reframe what the word means, which I haven't yet. So that's why it doesn't feel like a good option for me to pick. And then I understand that like logically, I understand that I'm not supposed to pick fear. Um, but again, it's done so well for me up until this point that why would I start choosing something else that I'm not sure of? So I think it's important just to um, to understand yourself so that you can evolve. And for me, I understand myself well enough that I don't like those options. I need a third option. So I need to create a third option for myself that I can pick. That way I can continue to evolve as a person and love and fear don't end up being my only options. So it's just understanding that like, people have different views of words depending on their experience of life. And obviously like my therapist, once I asked him, I was like, well, what does love and fear mean to you? And he explained what it was to him. And I was like, yeah, that's different. Because we have a different experience of life. And for him, it is the, the better option to pick love because of his view of love. And it's not good to pick fear because of his view and his experience of fear. And for me, I've just had like almost the exact opposite experience where it's better for me, to, it has been better for me up until this point to pick fear every time because I know how it works. I know how my body reacts. I know, um, how to like get myself moving off of fear and love for me is um can feel very terrifying and immobilizing because i get the response that you would get for fear i get that when people say they love me so it's just i need to gift myself a wider perspective of what these words are and also give myself a third option so i think it's important to let yourself um find a, like the language that you need in order to understand yourself better and also to um, understand that what you believe words or what words mean to you um, don't get like hung up on what those words mean to you and try and understand it's sort of a broader perspective of of life and just the more information you can intake into yourself about life the easier it'll be to provide yourself with a third option so for me I need to find a third option and that has kind of been my homework from my therapist this week is finding myself um, a third option Either that or I have to rehaul what those words mean to me. And I think that, I think I know that I can. Um, I just know it'll take um, a little bit longer. And so in the interim, I want to build myself a third option while I, I'm on the journey of reframing what love is and what fear is. So that eventually when I'm asked the question later on in my life, I can pick. I can pick love, but I don't, I don't think I have a comprehensive enough understanding of it or enough of a, um, enough healthy examples of the word love um, to override all, all the bad ones yet. But I know that I'm on my way there. And until then, I will give myself a, a third option. So let yourself create yourself a third option if that's what you need and if that's what heals you. But it's just important to not get hung up on what words mean to everybody else because how they, what they mean to you and how they land in your body matters. So just know that, but also understand that you can build yourself a different way of being. And if you, like me, have always chosen fear because it has been the better option, um, then I'll keep you updated on when I come up with my, with my third option. And I will just express that. It's, it's coming. It's, it's in the works. I'm trying to figure out what it will look like because I'm like, it's not gonna be fear and it's not gonna be love. It'll be something in the middle. So when I, when I find it, I will let you know. But until then, I hope that you are finding your own ways to healthily move yourself through whatever it is that you're going through at this time. Um, and as always, if you have questions or you have comments or you have suggestions or you already have a third option, leave it below because um, like I said, the more that I understand about life or the more that 
the wider my perspective can be, the easier it is to heal. So if you have perspective for me, feel free to drop it below. Otherwise, thank you for being here as always, and I will see you next time.